Consider, uh, can, hold on, let me move the, there you go. Consider this scenario. Coming home from lab one day, you pull into the parking lot of your apartment complex and park your car for the rest of the evening. Overnight, another car identical to yours parks in the same lot a few spots over. When you come out the next morning, you're unsure which blue BMW is yours. The difficulty in remembering which specific spot you parked in stems from the fact that you park in this lot every day, so you have many memories of parking in the different spots, which overlap and blend together. To remember where you parked from one day to the next requires distinguishing uh, between very similar events. This ability is known as pattern separation, when two similar inputs, such as memories of parking, are stored in a unique and non-overlapping way. Much theoretical work suggests that the dente gyrus subregion of the hippocampus is responsible for this, but it has yet to be experimentally demonstrated. This is the motivation of my project. In lab, I study this process with rats on a smaller, more control controlled scale. While I'm not asking my rats to park their cars, I am asking them to do something similar, to discriminate between similar looking locations on a maze. We developed this paradigm shown here to assess spatial pattern separation ability. Rats are taught to enter the maze and approach an object in a particular spatial location in order to receive a Cheerio reward underneath. They must then remember that location as distinct in order to differentiate it from other possible foil objects locations and return to that location during a subsequent test phase. The positions of the correct object varies across the arms of the maze, but its distance to the identical foil object is held constant at two arms apart. And this is because um, a two arm separation specifically recruits and engages the dentate. Uh, we record neural activity during the task using uh, micro drives, which are built in house and by hand. These drives consist of between 24 and 32 movable tetrodes, which are implanted and slowly lowered into um, the dentate gyrus. We're able to record single cells as well as local field potentials, which allow us to ask questions about what's going on at different scales during the time points of interest. Here, um, I'm showing you the average spectrogram across several sessions, and the x-axis is time in seconds, and the y-axis is frequency information. The zero indicates the object encounter time point, and warmer colors indicate higher amplitude. So initially, we looked at the object encounter time point for correct trials, which occurred during both study and test phases. This is an important interval in uh, the task because the object, the correct spatial location, and the reward all co-occurrence in time and space. Correct trials can serve as a proxy for successful uh, pattern separation ability. So here we observe a shift to higher frequencies uh, during object push indicated by this flush of turquoise that I've indicated with the, the boxes um, at the one to two second mark. Now let's look at the test phase. Um, there we go. Which we also see something similar. We see theta decrease while beta increases. And we believe that this shift in the oscillat oscillatory profile um, of the regions indicate a change in the way the dentate is processing information um, during this important interval. We then ask what behaviors might serve learning leading up to a successful choice. Are the rats using different strategies to learn and disambiguate during the experiment? And I could see this on a behavioral level while I was running the task because um, the rats that are most successful aren't the ones that are fastest out of the start box. Instead, um, the ones that are most successful tend to be the most thoughtful, pensive, and observant of the room throughout the task. So looking at the behaviors, what we find is that the behavioral states we're observing intersect with the different stages of memory in the task to shape the oscillatory dynamics of the hippocampus. So I'd like to highlight two different behaviors here. The first behavior is rearing, and this manifests as standing on the high limbs and scanning the environment from an elevated perspective. And that, that vantage point um, gives the rat added information that it wouldn't otherwise have. And we also found that for 58% of correct trials, the rats reared during the study phase. And from the spectrogram, what we see is both greater theta and beta frequencies. Second behavior I wanna highlight is scanning. And this would happen from the start box at the beginning of a trial, um, specifically in the test phase. And in 71% of correct trials, we would observe this behavior. And from the spectrogram, what we're seeing is a lot of theta. Um, now to summarize, uh, we observed a distinct dynamic um, distinct dynamic rhythms at this learned reward location, which might be a signature of correct performance. And again, this is theta de decreased with concurrent beta increases. And we think that this shift in frequency may serve to organize local neural activity 
for distinct processing of task relevant information that supports pattern separation. And secondly, um, I highlighted two key behaviors which we see are predictive of successful task performance. And this is rearing as well as scanning. And as far as future directions, there's still an abundance of questions we can ask and comparisons we can make. Um, today, I only show data for correct trials due to time constraints, but next steps will be to examine the behaviors, rhythmic profiles, and individual cell responses during successful and unsuccessful task performance. Thank you.